You know, I think the chemistry that we shared it has to be down to the casting of me and him together because chemistry is that indefinable wonderful ingredient is there such a word as indefinable let's <laughs> start that again chemistry is as people know it's um it's very rare to find and i think it's very hard to generate chemistry if it doesn't naturally exist um i certainly couldn't put my finger on why why it was there i think it was all down to the casting and uh and we were very good together. I mean, I really enjoyed working with him. He's a very, very sweet, private, kind man. And I think he, he could see that I was very green, very inexperienced, and was very caring with me. But uh, I think chemistry is in the luck of the draw. I really do. The, there are times when I've done jobs where you think there's going to be chemistry, and it just isn't there. It's, I do think it's all down to the casting. And that's why they had such a, a, a difficult and long journey, I think, to find the right person for that part. I mean, I, I, I seem to remember I went to three or four, maybe five interviews. It felt like that anyhow. It was very long and protracted, the whole audition process. So I put it down to, to an outside talent rather than my own, definitely. It was a really hard decision to leave, and it, it was a decision that, upon reflection, I regret. And it was a decision that I think I was forced into by many external voices, let's put it that way, where I was getting a lot of chatter, basically, telling me to do things at that time. Uh, I had just also come out with um, Ballycus Angel, and it had really taken off again. That was a massive hit, and but it was a completely different character. And uh, agents and friends and lots of people who really didn't have any and shouldn't have any influence in, in a career were, were telling me to move on. And again, my insecurity and my inexperience, and I listened and, and made that decision. I think, to be fair, because um, I have to take responsibility for myself and my decisions in life, I think that three years is a long time, and I know it doesn't seem like that in, uh, from an audience point of view, but three years playing the same character, especially if they don't really move on massively, if there aren't very demanding storylines. And it's not about having, I've got to explain this, it's not about having more to say, it's just about having a bit of a challenge when you go into work. Um, I felt that I, I wasn't getting that challenge, and uh, and understandably, you know, the, we we had a, a leading man, and it was his show, and everyone worked with him in in in, in that sort of ensemble way. But uh, I think all those factors contributed to me leaving the show. Well, Elizabeth and I knew each other. Elizabeth rang me up. Um, and said, Derv, she said, how much did you get paid for this series? They're paying me X, what were you paid? And I told her. And uh, and I have great affection for Elizabeth, and I know she has that for me. So I was delighted that someone really good and, and very similar, really, um, got a chance, you know. And I, I was glad that uh, I hadn't hindered the show too much, you know. After all, everyone's... Um, dispensable in life do you know what I mean I think uh, I think people anyhow I thought I thought you did a very good job <laughs> you'd be editing that one <laughs> it's very tr it's very tricky when talking about people are, are taking over they they do a very valid and she did do a very good job um, and she al always is going to be compared to me and it's really unfair I think to make comparisons I think I think uh, you've just got to wipe the slate clean and allow that actor or actress uh, to be appreciated for what they do. It, it, it's really tricky. It's not a, a good place to be. I certainly wouldn't want to, to come in and take over as someone, especially sit playing the exact same part. I would prefer someone to write a new part for me so that I could really put my mark on it. But um, she did a great job.
I would actually, but I don't think they'd offer it to me. I think I caused them too much trouble by leaving the series when I did. I think it would be amazing actually, but um, I don't know how or where. How would they do it? I mean, where would it sort of... I think, to be fair, if they did reprise, it would have to go to Liz, because she took over. That would be fair. <sighs> How does a girl from Ireland end up playing an East End Cockney barmaid? I don't know. I mean... It's just the luck of the draw. I, you know, you've got to remember, I started acting when I was 15. And uh, I came over to England to do uh, a play called uh, A Handful of Stars by Billy Roach. And that's where I got my big break because that's where it, w it was a huge success. It was a great part. And I got my agent. And, you know, although it always looks like when you look at people's careers, that uh, it's, it looks easy. It almost looks as if everything is followed uh, in, a, in a way that they've chosen. It's not. It's random and it's luck. And, um, and I think, I mean, obviously I could do the accent and things like that, but there were a lot of factors, obviously, that, that, that got me that part. I had done the, the Time to Dance so that there was a bit of interest about me. I... I don't know. Why does an Irish... Pre it's just the way it is. At least it was good casting. There wasn't any xenophobic casting there. It was it was genuine, you know, that the right person got the job, basically, at the end of the day. And I obviously was right at the time. I had a look that they liked. I don't know why I became an actor. <laughs> um... Well, I think, I think uh, to answer that truthfully, I became an actor because my mother was a huge influence and is a huge influence. She loved the arts. Uh, my mum was an English teacher and, you know, uh, was a fabulous teacher. And I think from a very early age, she encouraged that in all her daughters. Um, of course, she never dreamed that we would become an actress or we would go into the acting profession because it's so it seems so precarious from from uh, two parents who had very uh, sort of straight jacketed views on on what you did with your life. Um, but again, with me, you know, it, it was that thing of being in the right place at the right time. I had gone to acting classes as a kid. I got an interview for for a job and I got the job and it, it, it did seem to happen very quickly after that, you know, I I knew what I wanted, I, kn I knew I, at that stage I had no fear, you know, ignorance is bliss, you're 15, 16 years of age, you're, you're going up for parts and you're getting them and you're thinking, okay, I can, I can do this, but I certainly didn't have a clue what acting was about. And 18 years on, um, I'm still in it, I, I think... Of course, I'd love to be much more successful than I am, but I think really the definition of, of, of being a success, whatever that is, is that I'm still working and I'm still, you know, earning a living and I'm managing to do very diverse things. I think it's the diversity of roles that really attract me and also the different mediums. You know, I'm doing a play at the moment at the National and, and that's a big deal for me. To, uh, to walk on the Littleton stage every night and, and to play a, a raging alcoholic. <laughs> That's great. And, you know, I'm, I'm like a nun. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't do anything. I don't even eat chocolate anymore. Um, basically, it's escapism, isn't it? And I, I think that's what I like about acting. And I love it. You know, I really love the job.